Hi guys, I'm back. I know, it's been ages and I'm so happy to be back here. A lot of things happen and I just couldn't film anymore. It was just too much. And uh, I did my 10 days boot camp as well, which was fantastic. It was really good to meet people, speak to them, send them documents so they can learn English a bit better. And uh, if you want to be on the next boot camp, join the newsletter because I'm going to do a new one in the next couple of weeks or month. So just be on there because you want to grab your spot. Uh, it will be limited. Okay, and today I'm back to talk to you about my IELTS experience. So if you study English, you probably know about English exams. So basically you have different types of tests of exams and they test your English level and they tell you you have this level, this level, this level and then it puts you into a category with A1, A2 which is beginner and then B1, B2, intermediate and then C1, C2 which is advanced but you need to take a test to know that or you can guess but if you want to be sure and if you want to have an exact result to put on your resume then you have to take a test and the IELTS exam, so the IELTS, I'll just read that because I can't never remember, is the International English Language Testing System. So it means that it's a test and it's um, testing your level of English, basically. You can take the IELTS if you want to go to the UK or Canada, mainly. If you want to go to the US or different countries, uh, you might want to check if the IELTS is the best test for you. You can also go to Australia with it, but really the main ones are the UK and, um, and Canada. You can take an English test for different reasons. It can be for personal challenge, so you want to take a test to see what your English language is. Or maybe you want to go to university in the UK. Even though now it's probably a bit difficult, but um, you want to go to university and they ask you for a test. It's an obligation, okay? For example, when I went to Manchester University, they asked me for the IELTS, so I had to take it. And another case could be an employer. Imagine you want a promotion or you want to have a specific job, they can ask you to take the test as well. In France, I don't think the IELTS is the most common one for that. I would say it's the TOEFL or TOEIC, but it could happen. Another thing is that tests are not cheap and you have to pay for them. And in France there is only, I think, maybe six or seven cities where you can take the tests. But now they probably adapted it to online, which is better because you don't have to move. But um, you can take the test but it costs 240 euros, so 240 which is quite expensive, so if it's for personal challenge, you need to take that into account as well. Now, let's talk about the format. So, the test is designed to test your four skills. You don't have a choice, you can't choose just listening and reading like some other tests. You need to test your four skills, which is a challenge, let me tell you. <laughs> and with these four skills, you have reading, speaking, listening and writing. Okay, so the four skills of English or languages in general. And the speaking lasts 15 minutes. Okay, so it's for 15 minutes. So you speak to another person. The other sessions are 60 minutes except listening, which is 30 and it's more than enough. So listening, 30 minutes, reading, writing, 60 minutes. So as you can see, it's quite a long test to take. And usually, you do the listening, reading and writing on day one and then another day you do the speaking or if you're lucky then it might be in the morning and then the speaking in the afternoon or vice versa but it's not usually everything in a row or back to back because it's really exhausting. If you want me to dive deeper into the content of the test so talking about the different types of questions, my tips on how to succeed in the IELTS, I will be happy to do that. Just let me know in the comments, okay? I'm sure it's going to be helpful for some of you. Now, my experience. So funny thing, I took the IELTS twice. So the first time was when I left to the UK. So I left to the UK when I was 18 and I went to York. If you want, there is a video about that and uh, I can link it here somewhere 
And um, I was 18, I just studied English. So I went to a language school in York and I stayed for nine months, eight, nine months, and I studied English there. Everyone was taking the IELTS because lots of people were going to study at university after. And I saw all these people talking about IELTS, taking the IELTS course in the afternoon, and I was like, mm, what is that? <laughs> Tell me more. And so, I just decided to take it. Um, it wasn't really to go to university after because that wasn't my plan, but I just thought it would be a good personal challenge. So first I studied general English in the morning, I took classes, and then after three or four months I decided to take afternoon classes as well and to do the IELTS. And so it was quite intensive days, but um, it was really cool. It was great and it was different because when you take um, an English test, it's a specific format with specific types of questions. And so once you understand the types of questions and uh, how it works, it's like a game really, and you want to be good at the game. So um, it was quite interesting to train for that, I would say. And so my first, my first test was in 2010, so quite a while ago. I took it in York and I got 6.5 out of 9. So something I didn't speak about is the results of the IELTS test is from 0 to 9. And so 6.5 is not bad, it's good enough to go to university. If you do a first year, so if you start from first year at university, it's uh, usually 5.5 that is required to attend it. So I was quite happy. I remember the question for the speaking was really difficult. I was stressed. I was only 19, so I was really stressed about it. The question was, um, you've helped a friend in the past and um, I, I need you to explain to me what happened, why you helped that person and uh, things like that. I was like, mm, okay. And then you have like 30 seconds or one minute, I think it's one minute, to um, write some notes down. But really you can, only, you can only write some words like to focus on, to tell your story. And uh, I was like, okay, so I'm going to invent a full story in uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> and uh, so I invented something, but obviously if you invent something in such a short amount of time, it's not going to be very good. So I remember I babbled a little bit and I was like, um, yeah. <laughs> so it was a bit um, frustrating to get a question that was a bit difficult, especially because it's random. So my friend who was also taking the test, her question was perfect. But uh, you know, that's just exams, it's like that. And um, I got 6.5 overall, which I was happy about. And the second time I took it was in 2015. So five years later, I was in France, but um, I wanted to go back to university in the UK, finally. And um, I had to take the IELTS exam. It was a requirement, so it was an obligation. If I remember, the requirement was 6.5. So I was like, okay, I've done that before. I should, I should be okay, but I didn't really train for it. I, I knew my level of English was still good because um, I had different boyfriends who are, I spoke English with <laughs> and um, I was watching the news, series in English, movies, everything, so I knew listening and reading would be okay. But I was a bit scared for the speaking part and the writing part and um, writing for a test is not just sending an email especially for the IELTS. It's um, two different parts and you have a lot to write and specific requirements to, um, to reach. So it was quite difficult, especially because one of the questions, I had no idea what they talked about. <laughs> so I was like, okay. But um, in the end, I had the result of 7.5, which was really good. Like I was very happy about that. And um, no surprise, the writing task was a bit difficult and I can't remember exactly how much I got. Probably 6 or 6.5, something like that. But overall, 7.5 was more than enough to attend university. So I was quite happy about that and proud of myself. Now, what do I think about it? In my opinion, the IELTS exam is one of the best to test your level because you don't have a lot of multiple choices questions. It's more gap fields. I think it's very thorough, it's very complete. 
it shows your level in terms of speaking, reading and listening perfectly. And then the writing task is obviously, I mean, if you don't know how to write, like if you're not good in your own language, then it's even more difficult in English. But um, I think it's a great test, challenging, but really good. And if it's something you have in mind, I would suggest you to do it, like take it, prepare for it and then take it because it's a, a great test. And I think I'm like, I feel very grateful that I had the opportunity the first time to take it just for me, like as a personal challenge, because I prepared for it for quite a long time. And I think it helped me to um, to get 7.5 for the next one. Even if it was five years later and I didn't remember a lot of things about the, the writing or, you know, the strategy, I remembered the type of test that it was. I remember the format, the types of questions. Um, my level didn't decrease. So um, I, think, I think it was a good preparation for that second time. Well, that's it guys for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to put a thumbs up and to leave a comment because that's really helpful um, and I'm very happy to read you. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week in the next video. I will see you next time. Bye!